So, hey well, everyone. We do, we do the start, which is Tech Me Out. Yeah. Welcome to Tech Me Out. <laughs> and we uh, are Tech Me Out. No, we're not. No, we're, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese Tech Away. Get our name right. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Neil. And I'm Jez. And welcome to te Chinese Tech Me Out. <laughs> you in a good position? I'm in a good position. Okay, right. good, good, good. Hi. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Jez. Hi everyone, I'm Neil. And uh, this is the Chinese Takeaway. Uh, so Neil, what do we have here today? So today, um, I'm going to be discussing a little bit about how I organized my entire media content library, which inspired me to build my own home network. Great. Uh, so uh, what do we actually have here? Because I'm pretty sure that this is something to do with that, right? That's right, that's right. So here we have the P400 case from Fantex, an absolute amazing case in terms of airflow, fully mesh front cover, and it looks really nice. It's white and black, tempered glass, and also quite inexpensive. So what I have found is that I have about seven three and a half inch hard drives lying everywhere. I have a super old computer, lots of content from photography that I'd like to take a lot of photos from, movies, and uh, a whole bunch of different content. And I thought, why don't I build my own home server? Cool, and so you're using your old desktop to become a actual server for you. So what are you gonna use that server for? Yeah, exactly. So this is going to be a single server um, that will be on 24 seven. Yeah. Uh, it will be there so that I have all my hard disks in there. And this has hard disk trays. It actually has six of them, so I can put six of my hard disks in there. Um, it will store my media, which I'll run through Plex, which is essentially Netflix for your own content. Um, and then uh, I'll be able to access this also remotely in case I need to get to some of these hard drives. Oh, cool. And like, have you noticed that more people are doing this, especially with some of their older computers? Or is it still something that people are not really kind of doing? I think we've got to a stage now where everything is going online onto the cloud and people are doing that and, and getting onto it. And what I've what happens to me is I've got half my content on the cloud and half in the traditional medium of these hard disks. I could upload this all to a cloud service. Um, but one, when you're talking about terabytes of storage, it becomes very expensive. Um, and two, I like to have some of my files just being only on my premises. I don't want them in the cloud. So for that reason, if they're on my hard disk, they're sort of closed circuit and, and just for me, which is um, why I have this, uh, this, this idea to build it. And plus I have all the tech lying around, so why not just throw it all together? Cool, cool, cool. Just one question from my part, can it game? Definitely not, at the moment. <laughs> I mean, at least kind of strike, maybe? Yeah, I can do CS, so I'd definitely be able to. I mean, now with the integrated graphics, you can, especially on the uh, the Vega 11s that come with the uh, the AMD Ryzen lineup, they're decent graphics cards. They're, I think the latest I heard, they were equivalent to a GTX 1030. So um, yeah, even the fact that we can compare to discrete graphics, i.e. graphics that fit into your computer and install separately um, from last generation, it's, uh, it's a huge, huge step forward. So you mentioned the Vega graphics. Is this going to be the Ryzen uh, CPU in there? Well, originally, uh, I did plan to do that. Uh, Ryzen and AMD have been doing so well recently and with, with their whole Zen 2 architecture Ryzen yeah. uh, computers. But what I realized is when I picked the Ryzen 3600, uh, the price of that had caused Intel to really discount some of their older chips. And I was actually able to pick up uh, an 8700, uh, Intel i7 8700, for less than the uh, the Ryzen 5. And I think this was also because it was a bit of a bundle. I was buying the motherboard and everything all together um, and it all came out to a cheap. So clearly this computer store was just trying to get rid of stock. And I think that's really important as much as we get built up in the hype. You know, we're talking about two generations ago, the flagship 8700 um, processor, same number, six cores, 12 threads as the Ryzen 3600, um, but at a price that's lower, just, just made sense to me. Yeah, so um, where'd you get all the, the, the parts for uh, for this? I mean, it's been, it's been, I think, what is the new part that you're gonna put into this build? Yeah, so originally I was gonna put this whole super fast, well, not super fast, mid-range brand new CPU into it, like the 8700. But what I've realized is if you're building a server 
actually you just need something that works that's that's slow enough so i think a lot of people out there who have a spare computer lying around or they have a desktop which they can minimally upgrade a little bit if they need to um, i.e maybe just buy a case um, it's something that anyone can do so I've, i'm putting my old school i5 4460 in there which is about seven years coming up to seven years old um, it's ddr3 memory 16 gigs in there and you know for web browsing and all that kind of stuff it's absolutely fine and luckily, I actually still have a power supply that you sold me ages ago, <laughs> yeah. um, which is a thousand watt, uh, but a gold standard, um, 80 plus gold, which means it's a super efficient um, power supply, which means I can turn this and leave this thing on. And that's a good power supply because it doesn't even spin with the fan. Yeah. So it will be, you know, when you're, when you're leaving something on 24 seven, you do want it to be very power efficient as well. Yeah, I remember selling you that because it was my backup power supply, which was still overkill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, to have a thousand watts is... What are you running now? 1,200. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So uh, he's more of a gamer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so did you actually... So I think you told me that you might have bought some extra things uh, for this case, right? Yes. So with this case, um, I... I went on a couple of reviews and really it was Game and Nexus that do amazing uh, comparisons of cases um, to more detail than I'll ever be able to. And they came out and said essentially this is one of the best out of the box and also if you upgrade the fans you can get the best airflow out of a case. Plus I think it's just important that you like the way it looks and I do like the whole, the whole finish of the, 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 the computer case. Um, so I bought this um, which came with only one Fantex fan um, but this came with the option of adding two more up here and then also additionally uh, three fans up at the top um, up here. So what I did was I bought these um, from a Chinese website called Taobao. Uh, they were very inexpensive, 20 RMB. Um, so 20 RMB, that's basically two pounds, right? Two pounds, yeah. Um, so really not <laughs> expensive at all. And the only thing I really disliked about these fans is that they were this uh, yellow red ketchup mustard uh, cables. So I actually had some electricians tape and wrapped around and around and around them, a bit like um, a squash racket handle or a tennis racket handle. Um, so at least you didn't have to see those horrible colors. Yeah. And it all worked out pretty well, I think, not too bad. The reason why this case works is these brackets here for your hard disk, which um, fit into them. Um, nowadays, there's few and fewer cases that actually have these hard disk brackets mm -hmm. um, because no one has three and a half inch hard drives and to be fair why would you um, SSDs have come down massively in price but I have them lying around um, and this gives you the option to either be a normal case without these hard drive cages or you can put them in so um, right now if you want to get six hard drives in a case this is really one of your only options unless you go for a massive um, full ATX uh, case where this is a mid tower yeah because I, I personally have a full ATX mid tower case and it's probably about double the size. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, basically, you start getting to the point where it's unwieldy and just basically takes up the entire room that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a pretty cool case. Which one is that one? Uh, I've got the well, it was now I've got a new case, but the Razer um, NZXT H440, the Razer edition one. Um, Can you still get that? No, it's limited edition one. So mm -hmm. I. It was with real sadness that I actually sold it. So um, it's one of those uh, cases that I, I thought, you know, I love it, but it's just, it was just way too big. And it became the point where when it was in my room, it just became not an eyesore, but it just dominated my room. Yeah. And that's the reason why I left it. And did it have RGB? Of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I remember when I first got it, like five years ago, that it, was, it came out with the green, like the razor green, and I went, yes. And then the inside, so with the uh, kind of motherboard and the, the RAM, I went, just leave it all green. And I gave it to a nice little theme as well. So, Brilliant. Uh, I mean, but most of my things are razors, so I need to kind of uh, keep it to that same theme. Not Corsair? You're more of a razor guy? I mean, I started with Razer, I kept on going with Razer, Corsair does come up with some amazing things though. Uh, I think that um, maybe some of the keyboards I might get from Corsair. Okay. Um, yeah. With my new build, I also have some things from Corsair, but uh, it's not as distinguished 
Bull as um, Razor. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. For me, I find the Razors are a little bit too gamey. Yes. They they they, yeah. they they go on those design aesthetics that are I'm a gamer, and sadly, as a family man with two kids, just <laughs> gaming is, is is not something I can afford to do anymore. It's Razor is an apologetic. That's the ter- like like the exact exact word. They're like yeah, you have it. Um, my last phone is was a Razor phone uh, too, and everyone was like, "Oh wow, you're you're a gamer," and I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. And you're on a about it. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it's good. So, so what are the key takeaways of building a home network then? Glad you said takeaways. Um, so the key really is it's a function of uh, speed, how much you want to store, which is a function of the cost, and then the security um, that you're that you want to run on this. So in terms of um, data, the, you know, this home network allows you to store everything locally on your premises and you choose who to allow access to. Um, in this day and age, you're constantly hearing about so-and-so website leaking out people's personal data. So uploading to the cloud is um, getting, well, does come with its own risks and, and being hacked that way. Um, it's also having your own home network. You want more space, sell another hard disk and you can just keep adding. You don't have to worry about a cloud storage saying, okay, today we're going to increase the price of your um, subscription cost. So that's also another plus. Um, and then finally, it's just a lot faster, I found. Um, you can go onto Windows Explorer, click on the hard drive um, where you're storing everything, and there you have access to it just like it's connected to your computer locally. Um, and that's just great. Everything's very instant and quick. Um, and if you're running everything through a hardwire internet uh, cable, you know it's even quicker again, 10 gigabytes a second. Um, yeah, so that's really, I would say, the benefits. Yeah, but I mean, we do have to take in consideration the benefit of the cloud. Considering it's just super convenient, as well as just basically upload, pay, and forget, right? Yeah. Uh, like, it's come to the point where you have to have that cost equation of either building a home network computer, which can cost, uh, you know, about, probably at minimum 300 pounds, like 3,000 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, but, I mean, the cloud storage, like OneDrive, would probably cost you about 70 pounds or 70 Hong Kong dollars a year and you have to put that, put that little balance between the two to think which will probably be a better option for you. Yeah and you know ultimately then you're on this channel you like tech maybe you already have this hardware lying around and just like hey what should I do with it and so if you fancy a bit of fun you know I've always said computers are essentially Lego for adults you know throw these things together and if it works great you made use of those uh, those parts lying around. So guys, thanks for listening in to our very first uh, video. Like and subscribe in the button below. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this Chinese tech away. <laughs> no, don't put that. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Did I? <laughs> did you mean no, did? <laughs> I just sound like that. Yeah. <laughs>